Hey gorgeous souls and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for joining me for another one of my videos today. So today's video is a podcast episode from the number one spirituality podcast on iTunes, Spiritual Queen's Badass Podcast, my podcast. So today's conversation is with the lovely Sophie Bashford, who is the author of You Are a Goddess. And I love all things goddesses. And this was such a fantastic conversation with Sophie on all things manifestation, on all things goddesses, how we can connect to the goddesses, Goddesses, who are the goddesses and who can we work with to really help to manifest our desires. Sophie gives so many great tools and tips in this interview um, and it was just such a joy speaking to her so much so I invited her into my manifestation membership as well to come and do goddess month with us and it has been so much fun so much fun and Sophie is just a wealth of knowledge and such a warm lovely energy which I so so loved bringing onto the podcast and into the manifestation membership. And of course, if you want to listen to any more interviews from fellow spiritual authors, teachers and gurus, the most incredibly inspiring conversations, then you can find them all here on my YouTube channel under my podcast playlist, or you can listen to Spiritual Queen's Badass Podcast on any platform that distributes podcasts. So you have solo casts for myself every other week and then guest interviews, which you see here on my YouTube channel as well. So I really hope you're going to enjoy this interview. I hope you get lots from it. Please let me know your biggest takeaway and which goddess you're gonna work with in the comments below as I would love to hear. So thank you so much guys for joining me for another one of my Spiritual Queens Badass Podcast episodes. I'm so delighted to have the lovely Sophie Bashford with us today. So Sophie, if you don't know, is a leading intuitive channel, teacher and writer for the reemergence of the divine feminine. Her best-selling first book, You Are a Goddess, Working with the Sacred Feminine to Awaken, Heal and Transform, is the accumulation of many years experience of self-healing and reconnecting to the goddess within. Her new publication the vibrantly illustrated goddesses gods and guardians oracle deck is available now from hay house welcome sophie how are you doing hey emma yeah i'm really i'm good i'm um yeah really thrilled to be connecting with you here Oh, thank you. I'm so grateful that you're here. And I, I've loved your first book for many years now. I've given it a read when I got it all those years ago. And ironically, my friend also gave me a second copy for my birthday a couple of years ago. So I always have two <laughs> copies of your book for some reason. <laughs> oh, that's funny, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, great. I'm really so glad. I loved goddesses from your introduction to them um, mm -hmm. and loved learning all about them. So I thought it was about time we got you here on the podcast. Yeah. And, um, spoke about goddesses and all the wonderful things that you work with so my first question that I love to ask guests when they come on I ask every single guest this yeah and everybody's answer is different is when did you spiritually awaken what's your story yeah I always sort of welcome and also slightly kind of dread that question because I think we've only got 30 minutes and I could probably take about you know a week explaining that but I'm, <laughs> I'm obviously gonna gonna kind of boil that down um OK, so I guess, you know, I have to start with it was profoundly an emotional healing, really, Emma. I guess my sort of, you know, when the wall, the brick wall um, kind of came sort of right in front of me and I had sort of had no choice but to really dive into a quite deep emotional healing. I had sort of some childhood trauma. Um, my mum died when I was very, very young, very suddenly. Um, and I never really had the tools to process that at all. So I had a childhood bereavement and something that's not spoken about a lot. It's still very, it's quite taboo actually. And it certainly was back in the, in the seventies and eighties. Um, so I went into adulthood kind of as a very kind of competent and sort of, you know, well-rounded individual and I kind of just started crumbling, you know, something over, you know, there are a few triggers for that. But basically, um, I realized that I couldn't really maintain the control mechanisms that I'd been using. And I've been very much, I suppose, I would see it now in my masculine energy, you know, the energy system that kind of governs our world is that masculine kind of doing, thinking, planning, very logical, very analytical I'm a Virgo and I have lots of Virgo in my chart. So I'm very much tuned into that perfectionist, logical, analytical, you know, I, I just kind of wanted to excel at a lot of things that I was doing. But 
emotionally, you know, my feminine energy was screaming, to be honest. I had no outlet for that. And, and there was, I didn't feel there was any space for that, to be honest. Um, so I kind of just sort of crashed and I dropped out of university. I just took a completely different path, was quite lost, um, did a few different jobs, you know, actually very, very sort of relevant that I've gained a lot of experience from all the jobs I've done. But, you know, I was really missing something. I was not in my fullness. I was not in my wholeness. I was also, my heart was broken, to be honest. My heart was broken. And I sort of went into therapy and I began um, sort of synchronized with the birth of my first daughter as well. Huge gateway, of course, brick wall, really, Emma, to be honest, absolute brick wall, could not go sideways, could not go, could not avoid any longer this enormous emotional baggage that I had. And I kind of, it broke me down and I had to start unpacking all of that. Now, I know a lot of you are listening, probably a lot of listeners now, we're very used to talking about therapy, you know, but back then, really, we weren't. Mm -hmm. And it was not mainstream at all. Um, so going into therapy at that time kind of felt like, you know, it was difficult to ask for help. It was very difficult to ask for help. And I'd always looked very competent from the outside. And I then kind of started opening up, really breaking down a lot of barriers. And then another kind of huge change happened. You know, my marriage broke down. Mm -hmm. And an enormous, and it wasn't something I planned. You know, I still feel sad about it, actually, in many ways, because I don't think we ever sort of totally, you know, there's always lots of nuances to the way we feel about things. But, you know, it happened, it shook me, it really, there was, there was these kind of shaking experiences, Emma, really, the emotional healing and the kind of shaking of my whole vessel saying there is more you need to go into the underworld you need to excavate what's inside you and that came from really lots of things breaking down and falling away from me and the plan if there ever was a plan for my life um certainly when I was 18 16 18 thinking I mean it looks absolutely nothing like anything that was ever projected for me not that there was any I didn't I didn't grow up with a lot of expectation on me I don't didn't think but actually maybe under the surface we're always tuning into those expectations aren't we for of what is it is to be successful what it is to be you know uh, um, valuable and um, contribute to the world so I basically you know, I hope, I mean, obviously there was a lot, there's a lot more within every stage that I could actually just explain here, but it was a catalogue, I suppose, of, of kind of breaking down. And, you know, we say breakdown, you know, we use that as a very sort of, I mean, it's more acceptable now, but it's always been termed as, oh my God, if you're having a nervous breakdown or emotional breakdown, that's bad, right? That's a, fa <laughs> that's a failure. That's not good. But it actually can be the key. And it was something that I needed to go through to then recognize, I then became irrevocably drawn at the same time as this kind of my marriage breaking down to, I suppose you would call spiritual, spiritual resources, spiritual themes. Um, and I began doing a lot of spiritual work. And I recognized that, um, there was something else wanting to birth through me. And that was an intuitive gift, if you like. When I say gift, I don't mean I'm special having that gift. But what I mean is we all have that gift, but I was being asked to kind of really harness it, really tune into it. So I began kind of working with tarot cards, working with oracle cards, meditating, going to groups, eventually starting groups at my home, tuning, you know, beginning to actually open up my channel of spiritual communication. And again, there's so much within that. I mean, that took years. That did not happen in like a month. You know, it took years, years and years and years, very much step by step. Um, but then I recognized that I actually was here to 
reattuned to my feminine energy. And that's what I was here to bring. That's what I could contribute to global healing. That's what I could contribute to the world. That was my part of my creative purpose um, was, and to have, that's how I was to help people. And so that's what I did. And what a purpose, what an amazing message and way to, to help the world. And it's just so amazing to hear your journey and your story because I'm sure lots of people can resonate. Like you say, child bereavement isn't spoken about a lot. It's not something that is massively covered in the self-help sphere or like you say, coming from that generation of time where therapy and breakdowns, et cetera, was not accepted. And we didn't talk about our feelings and emotions. You know, it's so true. So to see you, come through that in a positive way and now be able to help people is is fantastic and I'm sure a lot of people are very grateful for it as well so let's talk a little bit more about your goddess work then so Mm. what are goddesses for anyone listening who has no idea and how can we connect to them so if you think of you know the goddess we know the goddess from art we know the goddess from stories from mythology we know we know that the goddess pops up in lots of kind of acad- you know reference material okay she's a part of our world we see pictures of her art of her read stories about her but actually the goddess goddesses are spiritual guides they are basically messengers from the divine realms and they embody they all bring with them they are really kind of spiritual teachers and just in the way that you know you're you you may know if you're listening to this you may know about working with angels and you may know about working with say nature spirits or animal spirits it's this feeling that you know that the the divine feminine is a is a consciousness Um, But there are also individual guides who can you can call on, you know, you can work with their energy. And sometimes you might like to actually, you know, see them, look at them, actually look at a representation of them, look at a picture of them, look at a statue of them um, to kind of help you connect. But you also might want to read about them and read about how they can help you and what area of life they can help you um, with healing, with growing, with developing um, and with transformation. And so that's what they are in a sense. And it doesn't mean when I'm saying this, it really doesn't mean that you suddenly have to kind of, you know, become this kind of clairvoyant who can see a full representation of a goddess in front of you when you meditate for kind of an hour and you that's the only way you can connect with the goddess. I mean, absolutely not. All I am here to say is that the goddess, if you're listening to this right now, there's a there's there's a purpose behind that. You've been led to Emma, you've been led to this particular place because a part of your soul, even though you may not intellectually know what the goddess is, a part of your soul remembers her and remembers her maybe through just a different way of living, a different way of being, a different way of experiencing the world, which isn't all just kind of masculine and thinking and planning and, you know, decision making and being logical about life that's an amazing way to be and it's incredibly valuable but I think you'll probably you know agree that on our planet by only using those qualities of just actually you know the kind of pushing energy Mm. the striving energy the driving energy there's something missing you know most the earth is craving healing the earth is craving nurturing the earth is craving being seen you know as something more than just that layer and so are you if you're listening to this there's a part of you that is the goddess and the goddess takes many forms but she lives within you and you have all of these different aspects of the goddess within you and so my book does its best to kind of take you through meeting the goddesses nine goddesses there's more than nine goddesses but nine goddesses and you meet them one by one as a spiritual guide as a teacher as a mentor as an energy 
you meet them and they tell you, they explain to you what they represent, what area of life they preside over, um, an area of your psyche as well, of your psychology, of your emotions, of your body, your behavior, and your power. <laughs> and we're probably going to talk about manifestation because that's what Emma's so tuned into. But, you know, your power and how you can actually start or continue wherever you are in this journey, acknowledging that you have the feminine within you and that it's a huge powerhouse, it's a huge storehouse, it's a treasure chest. And it may have been neglected because our world for so long has been only governed by just this kind of quite limited masculine way of seeing the world, a sort of narrow lens, I would say, a narrow lens. And, you know, it's not enough anymore. It's not enough. Things are, br things are not working because of that. And it begins with you. You know, if you're listening to this, you can do this. You know, you can, you can bring, you can tap into the wisdom of these spiritual guides and they can help and support you. And there's more support there for you than you may have realized. And that's what my work with the goddess is so much about. And it's not about Emma speaking about this from a very lofty kind of elevated, being in a bubble, not part of your everyday life. It's absolutely not that. It's about really recognizing that the goddess sort of lives within you is a is a barometer for everything that's going on within your actual life and the way that the goddess will come into your life normally maybe we'll get into talking about this in a minute like with my experience and the experience of so many of people I've worked with my clients my audience people I work with often comes with, with almost like a direct intervention. So people often feel a particular goddess working with through their life. They don't even realize it at the time, but basically some, they recognize something's not working in their life or something has broken down in their life, or there's a point, a trigger point that comes or a kind of, you know, a, almost like a domino effect in their life where suddenly things are crumbling or there's a, there's a big pivotal turning point and that is nearly always the goddess intervening and actually beginning to strip things away, shake you out of a bit of a, maybe a bit of a slumber to help you start to remember this calling and to help you re remember how to heal yourself and ultimately sort of align yourself with the path that you chose to take in this lifetime and to recognize that it fits into a bigger plan and I'm you know I would take a leap of faith and say that if you're listening to this now it's no accident and that you have the goddess wants to help guide your path I love that so beautiful and you know I've loved working with the goddesses I've loved learning all about them as well so it's so amazing how we can like you say rec reconnect back to the feminine energy like that's been a massive journey for me over the years balancing my feminine energy coming back into my feminine not just defaulting to the masculine energy so um yeah love the goddess work super super powerful so everybody listening is going to be a big fan of manifestation hopefully <laughs> that's what we teach here on the podcast so how can the goddesses help us with manifestation and in our daily life well yeah I was thinking about that before I came on and um when I think of manifestation I think well what is manifestation to me it's about sort of you know drawing to you what you most desire what you want okay so you can have your ego kind of wanting things and that's kind of something that you might kind of it's very much the sort of top level of that there's nothing wrong with that but you can also have a deeper sort of longing you can have a yearning within you that is craving something wanting to attract something to you because you you know you you, you kind of feel it on a deeper level and the thing about I always think about is you know asking for what you want what do you need right now what do you want to bring into your life what do you want to attract is um you have to be able to receive it 
because mm. there's no point you can think of all these things that you want but if on a deeper level you're not open to receiving it it might be coming to you but it's just going to kind of get held up like traffic gets held up it's going to get stopped right because you're kind of going I need this I need this I want this I want this but actually I don't think I deserve it mm. or I don't have permission to receive that and the thing about the feminine energy if there's one word that sums up the feminine energy in its most sort of simple form it's receptivity being receptive being rather than doing and that's something that we sort of see reflected in the sort of sun and the moon you know the sun is kind of the sun is that active giving sort of energy and the moon is that receptive reflective you know being energy and every single goddess that you work with will be working on some level with kind of helping you open up to receive and it can be really difficult because there's a lot of messaging in our you know and you may have had it from your family members you may have had it from you know your your generationally you know you may not have really have that model to you you know you might not have had it modeled to you that it's not you know is it selfish is it is it greedy is it am i not am i not kind of you know i'm am i depriving somebody else if i receive something good you know or do i actually just deserve to have this mm. you know can i receive it and that is probably the and, and, you know, that it sounds, the words sound kind of nice to say, but believe me, the practice of actually opening to receive can bring up a lot of emotion. You know, there can be a lot within that, can't there, when we're actually saying, <laughs> you know, I want this, I want to bring this into my life. But then maybe the shadow energy kind of comes in and starts unconsciously sabotaging it and unwinding it and undoing all everything that you've really kind of, you know, put into that pot. So the goddess, it's about clarification, and actually sort of taking the layers off and going, OK, what's the deeper level here? Where do what, what's actually going on here? Is it OK for me to fill my cup before I give to others? Do I have to be? on the floor, depleted, struggling, straining. And now I'm not saying that life, life gives us challenges. You know, life is challenging, but it doesn't have to be a chronic struggle. You know, that's the difference. Mm. Because when you're recognizing the areas in yourself, and that's where the goddess does this so gently, with so much compassion and it's about having compassion for yourself recognizing that if you've had past traumas if you've had modeling where you know you weren't able to believe that you deserve to actually you know really open up to that life was on your side you know that you were able to receive from life then you know, that unhealed part of you will probably find a lot of ways to get in your own way. Mm. So manifestation, I think it's, it's, it's about that, isn't it? And recognizing also that you are always, the goddess is about tuning into your higher, per, highest purpose on the planet. What are you here for? Mm. Now that's a huge question, but you won't want to manifest anything that is really not to do with your purpose. That's what you're tuning into. Now, it, you know, I know it's not, as I'm sure that, you know, you, you speak about all the time, there's a truth that you're here to embody. There's a truth that you're here to embody. So everything you wanna manifest is gonna be a reflection of that truth. And, that's what the goddess is is helping you with because the more that you're shining the more that what you want to manifest to support yourself is amplifying your vibration your beauty your light your depth your gift 
to the world. And you can be a stronger channel for that, can't you? If you are believing that you deserve to receive that support and you can then give that in abundance to other people. And that's what you're here for. You're here to be a shining light. Mm, it's so true. And I think a lot of people maybe forget that. And I think I, what I hear a lot is people with step, um, well, step, step three, step five, whether you're following my process or the standard law of attraction process, um, people believe that receive is just, yeah, cool. Yeah, it's here. Great. Fantastic. Don't have to do anything. And I laugh because I'm like, no, no, no. It's still a step. It's still a process. And you still exactly like you said, Sophie, have to relax into that receiving. You have to be open to that receiving, which is a very feminine act. So I think a lot of people don't always associate the two or think that receiving is an energy or a process that they have to, you know, relax into to actually receive the desire. So I love what you said there because it, it makes so much sense. And I think a lot of people will resonate with that and understand why that is so important to the manifestation process as well. So our go-to goddesses then, who are your go-to goddesses and how can we start to work with them? Well, the thing is about that is there's a different goddess that's going to be sort of predominantly working with you at whatever, depending where you are in your life and in your journey, in your process. So there are different. So in terms of saying my go to, I mean, the most important goddess is probably on my path and the ones that I see repeatedly showing themselves with most people I work with at sort of pivotal points in their transformation journey is the goddess Kali, the Hindu, well, she's very well known in the Hindu, uh, Hindu faith. The Hindu goddess Kali, who is um, the goddess of transformation and spiritual awakening. And she is the goddess who people often will find their first contact with sort of got awakening to the divine feminine because she comes in with a kind of quite like an earthquake energy. You know, I was talking about in my experience when I first kind of started opening up to this, to the, to the goddess, it felt like everything was tumbling down. It felt like everything was being stripped away from me. Now this is probably, the, it sounds a bit, it's the opposite of manifestation in a sense, but it's not really. And I'll tell you why. Because when you're manifesting, you don't, you can manifest a load of old stuff, right? That might feel good in the moment, but is it really going to sustain you? Is it really authentic? The thing about Carly is that she will strip away everything that's not true. Everything that is holding you back from being your truest self. She will almost strip everything bare, like sort of bringing everything down to its bare state so that you are almost stripped back now that is not comfortable for the ego it's not comfortable because we tend to go into a lot of fear and think that you know the worst is happening but actually she's the one of the most important goddesses that you will ever ever experience because she will take away everything that is stopping you from becoming your most spectacular self and you have to have that you have to let go in order for that to be revealed so it changes your vibration completely from the ground up so that you actually get to sort of let go of maybe previous identities of maybe who people thought you should be who you always thought you should be you're letting go of a lot of programming a lot of programming maybe negative programming limited programming masculine programming about fitting into a very narrow kind of box and it's shaking you awake really is a sort of so Carly is a go-to goddess when I say go-to you probably won't go to her first she will cut she will decide when she comes into your life and that will be there but what I, it's a go-to in the sense of what you're trying to say because if there's one aspect where people say to me 
often people have given me amazing stories actually of they've not known anything about goddesses never even recognized you know that they could kind of feel goddesses and they've maybe had an experience where they've you know been through an illness or they've been through a really challenging time and they would feel this presence with them and they describe they may do it in a meditation or they may have a you know just a moment of feeling there's this really intense presence with them they may even see details sometimes, but not always. And then they read my book, or it's also in my Oracle deck, Carly's in my Oracle deck, and they read my book particularly because I really describe her in detail there. Um, and they're like, oh my God, I suddenly realized that there was a, there was a reason for what was happening in my life. I realized that there was a, a context for it and that amazing things were going to come from this experience of Carly coming in. So, it, you know, and giving them actually these sort of signposts, you know, to actually make sense of what was happening in their lives. So Carly, absolutely. And the other one I would say, I'm kind of going, Carly's the first goddess you meet in you're a goddess. And it's a process of going through nine. And the ninth one, the last one you meet is the goddess Isis, the ancient Egyptian goddess Isis. So the, She's a very popular goddess, I know that. She's very important because she's tuning you into your inner power and your purpose. Now they are both very sort of loaded words, I get that. But she's also helping you to answer what I call our sacred contracts to the goddess. So it means that if you're listening to this, even if this is completely new to you and you're maybe not sort of grasping everything I'm saying, or it's still, you know, it feels kind of like, you know, really new. You have a sacred contract to the goddess. Emma, you have a sacred contract to the goddess and the way that you're delivering that now and actually everything that you're still healing in yourself, your challenges are also part of your contract to the goddess. You are reawakening that remembering of what she means, means to you, your soul, your soul has a memory of her. And even though you might not think you're using that wisdom or that wisdom, you're not sure of all the sort of details of that, on a broader level, you have a contract to the goddess that you're answering. And that's where all of your healing, things that you need to heal in your life are leading you to that. And so Isis sort of, I always say, you know, she holds your contracts. I know that sounds quite mysterious, but she kind of holds your contracts. And so when, when you're working with Isis, you're really asking her, you're sort of saying a prayer to her really and you're saying you know goddess Isis show me the steps to answering my contract to you how can I serve you what is the purpose of my life how can you give me you know that shape to my life that makes me feel like I'm really making a difference and gives me a real sense of fulfillment just a feeling it's not an intellectual thing it's not a mental thing it's just a feeling that you're in the right place doing the right things even though they're hard sometimes and they will be hard sometimes even if they take you so much courage even if you sometimes doubt whether you can do them they will be that thing that make you sing you know make you come alive light you up where you lose yourself sometimes in the doing of them, that creative process, the thing that you long to do, really, the thing that you long to give. And that could be anything. It doesn't have to be something that we consider to be spiritual. You know, everything is spiritual when it's infused with this sense of sacred meaning. OK, that it's opening someone else's heart and. So Isis is the goddess of power and purpose, recognizing that you do have an immense inner power within you and it can make a tremendous difference to the world, but it needs to not be stifled. It needs to be your true voice. It needs to be you sort of truthfully showing up in the world. And that can often be a very scary, it can be a scary thing, but fear and power are kind of two sides of the same coin because the thing that you're probably most scared of doing is the thing that you most need to do, all right? So that power is when you work with Isis and you call on Isis to guide you. And you could do that right now, even if you don't know, even if you haven't read my book or if you haven't got my cards, if you've never heard of her, 
she's with you right now. She is guiding you right now because you're listening to this. So you've known her before and you know these goddesses. You know the goddess, even if you don't think you do. So just what does it mean to you? And trust, trust what it means to you. You know, trust what it means to you because they are the seeds. That's, the, that's just the beginning of you opening up this huge world that can give you a new vision. You know, it can actually support you, reflect back to you your, your inner power and your greatness, actually. You know, wherever you stand, you have this greatness within you that when it's shared, when it's shared, it can really, really make a difference to the world and to, and to, and to everyone that you come in contact with. So I would say Isis, goddess of power and purpose, incidentally, as a sort of incidental thing, it's a very personal thing to me, but it's also, I think it's relevant for everyone. Isis also helps heal the mother wound. So, or your connection with your mother in this lifetime. And because so much of working with the goddess is about expanding beyond previous limits, it's, she gives you this courage to help you no matter what relationship you have with your mother, whether it's really positive, whether it's a mixture of the two, as it usually is, whether it's actually not there at all, or it's quite negative or difficult. Isis is there to help you feel that it's safe to expand beyond your mother's kind of ideas or limitations. So you need to, even if your mother wasn't sort of supporting you or giving you or wasn't able to actually um, live a life in the way that you want to live your life, Isis really helps you expand beyond previous limits and expand beyond that of your mother. But as you do that, you also send healing back through your mother line, through generations. So you might have heard of the phrase, when you start to heal, you heal seven generations back and seven generations forward. And this is really important. That's why your healing is so important, because it's not just for you. Do you need to actually give yourself permission to expand beyond what your mother could embody for herself. And it's no judgment on your mother's choices. It's no, you know, it's nothing about your relationship with your mother and how much you love her, how much you respect her. Maybe she's even, you know, been enormously supportive to you and still is. It doesn't mean that you're actually, you know, not appreciating your mother. But what it means is, is that perhaps you have a calling to live a slightly different life than she lived. Maybe you have a calling to open up to different levels of consciousness. Maybe you're a bit worried about her approval. Maybe that's kind of stopping you from expanding. Maybe you're a bit scared of having more than she had in some ways. And that doesn't mean material things necessarily. It could do, but just more love more time more nurturance more support more resources in every way or just maybe being sort of expanding wider bigger not this I mean, it's not a judgment on her choices or her life but there's an element where isis helps you actually bring enormous healing into your your spiritual bond with your mother and your mother line so that's the divine feminine line the goddess line running through your your generation or your ancestry so it's enormously liberating working with goddess isis because it helps you really spread your wings and actually be who you are meant to be and, and you know it can be so difficult to do that when there's so much layered on top of you um feeling that it's not safe to do that so that's i would say probably Isis and Carly, just as you know, they're both powerhouses and they're kind of the bookends, if you like, of my book, You're a Goddess, because we start with Carly and we sort of complete um, with Isis. So it's rising into power and purpose. And um, in between that, you meet, you, you go to meet various other amazing uh, goddess figures who all have their part to play in your healing. 
um, your transformation. So yeah, that's what I would say. I love it. And what two powerful powerhouses to work with as well. Carly and Isis, love them both. So um, loved what you shared there. Thank you. We've got so many insights on those two powerful goddesses and what they can help us with. So I'm sure that's resonated with so many people listening as well. So my last question to you today then, Sophie, is what is one piece of life advice that you'd like to leave my lovely listeners with? Yeah, well, I think this is just, you know, an easy one. It's one that I live by every day. Quite often when you're on this, when you're on a spiritual path, um, you can feel that number one, time is running out, that there's a great sense of urgency to do what you need to do, even if you're not quite sure what that is. And you can also feel overwhelmed by the task that there's so much to do. You might even have a sense that you have so much to do or accomplish, but you're not even sure what that is yet, but you just feel the energy of it and it feels enormous. And so my advice I would leave you with, honestly, this is for your own healing. If you're in a process of real healing at the moment, or if you're in a process of working with Emma with her manifestation techniques, all of that's leading you into being your true self and activating your true power and doing what you most need to do from your soul on this planet. Take it step by step, literally one step at a time, because you will otherwise feel so daunted by the prospect of everything that you are here to heal, everything that you are here to, to kind of give, you know the levels of your transformation that you can you can sometimes feel totally paralyzed by that and not know where to start so I always say you know one baby step a day and that can just be making a phone call to someone booking a, a, a healing session that can be a huge brave thing to do you know reading a two pages of a book doing a couple of you know listening to a podcast writing in your journal you know putting one thing out on on your website or even just taking one step to start a website or just whatever it is doing you know one bit of exercise or taking a little nap or meditating for five minutes one baby step a day that is in the direction of your purpose and or your healing your transformation one take it one step at a time and believe me if you take that approach you will not believe the strides that you make you know, you will, you will not believe how fast, how deep, how rapid your growth will be and that everything that you want to attract to you, you know, it becomes almost um, natural and you, you enter into a natural flow and you realise there's also a lot more support out there than you may have been tapping into. So one step at a time, that, that would be take it day by day. And what amazing advice as well. <laughs> um, <laughs> like you say, you know, it can be so easy to just fall into that trap of like hustle, bustle, go, go, go. Like, you know, wanting to do everything, having everything by yesterday. And I think it's such an important reminder to slow down, to just allow, to receive and just, yeah, allow every moment to be what it needs to be. So I love that. Thank you. So your new deck then, which is mm -hmm. your goddesses, gods and guardians. I've got it. I love the designs they are so beautiful where can we get it from and what can we expect from them oh you can get it from amazon you can get it from hay house you can get it from barnes and noble waterstones um any good any good retailer actually um what can you expect well you can expect goddesses in abundance but you can also expect a sprinkling of divine masculine guides gods which has been such a joy to incorporate and people have loved that. And guardians who are basically uh, guides from the magical sort of divine celestial realms and also the earth, a lot of earth-based and nature-based guides as well. And I'm just gonna share with you a card that I picked for our podcast. I drew a guardian actually, and this is King Neptune. Mm -hmm. And he represents sensitivity, 
So maybe we've got some highly sensitive people listening to this or watching this today. So you're a highly sensitive soul and your sensitivity is a gift. And I know it feels really difficult at times in this very, very harsh and um, fast paced, overwhelming world. But King Neptune is here to remind you that you need to protect your sensitivity. You're probably very empathic, pick up on things from everywhere. And so King Neptune uh, reminds you that your sensitivity is a gift and he's popped out for you today. But there are many, many wonderful other um, cards and guides within this Oracle deck that was an absolute joy to, to create, actually. I love that. Amazing. Well, I will put a clickable link to all of Sophie's work in the description below. So you can go and find all of that super easy and what a lovely reading as well for the podcast. So I hope that all resonated with everybody. But Sophie, where can my lovely listeners find you if they want to learn more about your work? Um, you can go to sophiebashford.com, which is probably the first place, the first place to go my website. I'm also on Facebook at Sophie Bashford Intuitive. And I'm on Instagram at the Sophie Bashford. Amazing. Well, thank you so much, Sophie, for today. I've learned so much and I cannot wait to re-dive back into your book. You've spurred me on to get back into it. So I'm going to go and reread it because it's been quite a few years since I last read it. And I'm sure. And there's also, yeah, sorry to interrupt you. I was going to say there's also my audible, um, my audio book of You're a Goddess is really popular because people, because there's a lot of meditations in there as well. So if you like listening, if you're not so much of a reader, although many people have both the the hard copy and the audible um but go head to audible and, and maybe the audio book might be might be for you because it's read by me and there's lots of meditations in there as well awesome and again all the links will be below to sophie's work so you can go and find all of that but thank you so much sophie for coming on today it's been such an honor and thank you for sharing all your wonderful pearls of wisdom with us you're welcome it's been a real pleasure to be here so thank you so much guys for watching. I appreciate all your views and likes. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new here because I would love, love to see you again soon. Don't forget to leave me a comment in the comments box down below because I reply to them all. And don't forget you can join my free Law of Attraction support group over on Facebook where you can join myself and other like-minded souls where we talk all things Law of Attraction and spirituality. I hope you have a fantastic week, whatever you're up to. And I'll see you all in my next YouTube video, which will be on Friday. Lots of love.